people don't do not ask me enough about Dio. I was just going to ask you. <laughs> yeah. And that's what did like, you learn from Dio? Oh my God. How much time do we have? All right. We have all as, as have much time as you time. have. As long as you want yeah. to know, I, Actually, if you watch the documentary, you you get the uh, you get a really good sense of of uh, of how much not how much, but some of the things that I do learn from him because he was he was one of those people, and Randy Rhodes and him as musicians just filled it up for me. Uh, Frankie originally as my original rhythm section mentor did that for me. And then you have Randy and then you have Ronnie. Uh, complete uh, leading by example. Mm. That's how, you know, Ronnie never sat down and told me, you got to do this. I watched him and he knew I was watching him and him being originally a trumpet player, a musician, classically trained, being a bass player, being a composer, being Ronnie James Dio, period. Uh, there was a lot to learn, to learn, and a lot to watch, and a lot, and it just it it took my life to a whole different level. Wow, Ronnie, you know, but it was just by watching him be Ronnie James Dio. Yeah. My God, he used he used to like when I first joined the band. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this 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 was typical Ronnie. Okay, he would do a show, sing for two hours, they would go backstage, and within five, ten minutes, his uh his uh personal you know manager will come in and say, Listen, there's some people here to see you. And he'll go, Oh, I just got off the stage, I'm tired. Okay, let me go. Okay, so he'll go. And then about 15 minutes later, I'll follow him just to see what's going on, right? I just joined the band, so I'm kind of getting a feel for things. And, and there's Ronnie, and he will always have, we will have like, like, a, like a glass of beer, like a mug. And he would never go down. He was just holding it, right? <laughs> it's a prop. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, and he would be like talking, and his conversation would go, so, how's your cousin Bill? Is he, how's his health? Did he get that surgery? And I'm going like, oh, he must, he must, he must really know these people very well. No, he hadn't seen them like in years, but he remembered that. Wow. So from town to town, he would do the same thing. And I, and I thought, there's gotta be a trick to this. <laughs> this is, this is too insane that he remembers every person's name, their family members, friends, what they do for a living, every single show, wow. everywhere, everywhere around the world. Yeah. He did that. And it was like, and that was, that was like my entry into, you know, that world of Ronnie James Dio where everything was like, I can't believe this. This is just amazing. Yeah. Every was, day it was just like that. Yeah. I was lucky enough to meet him in 2007 and me and my wife went backstage and it, it was it was incredible because he wanted to know more about me than I wanted to know about him. And it was just, I mean, he was so personable and genuinely interested in knowing who his fans were and what you did for a living and where you lived and where you grew up and all that stuff. So I can only imagine what it's like traveling with him on a daily basis and witnessing all that. Oh, and the crew, the crew loved him. Oh my God. They would, you know, like, let's say when we were not touring as Dio, they would, you know, going to do other different tours and then management will call them and say, Hey, yeah, Ronnie's going back out in, in, in three months. So they will tell whoever they're with and say, listen, I got to go. Ronnie needs me. And everybody would say, yeah, go ahead. That's the respect wow. that Ronnie had where the rest of the industry understood when somebody was leaving their tour to go back to work with Ronnie. Wow. Yeah.